Welcome to the broadcast. I'm David Feldman, davidfeldmanshow.com. Friend me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and please go to davidfeldmanshow.com and sign up for my weekly newsletter. On today's show, we talk with the editor-in-chief of the Committee to Investigate Russia, Jackie Schechner. Stay with me. And this is going to hurt, by the way. <laughs> Donald, as long as you give me fair warning. Okay. I know what I'm in for. <laughs> Donald Trump announced that a second White House chief of staff, John Kelly, will be stepping down. Kelly is a retired Marine general and, according to CNN, has testified before the Mueller committee. For more on this, we're joined by Jackie Schechner. Jackie is editor-in-chief for the Committee to Investigate Russia, a nonpartisan, nonprofit organization helping Americans understand Russia's continuing attacks on our democracy. Thank you for joining us, Jackie. Oh, it's my pleasure. I want to talk about the Committee to Investigate Russia.org. You guys have done an amazing job, and I'll sing your praises in a second. It's amazing. Well, thank you. It really is amazing what you guys have done. But General Kelly is not going to lie to Mueller. No. I have a lot of problems with General Kelly. He did some horrible things to undocumented workers when he was over at Homeland Security. But am I wrong for thinking that General Kelly's testimony before Mueller is going to be a lot more damaging than Michael Cohn's? And how quickly can this thing unravel for Trump? That's a good question. From what I understand, what Robert Mueller wanted to talk to General Kelly about was potential obstruction of justice and what was going on behind the scenes in the White House as the president was trying to find ways to fire people, get people to resign, somehow obstruct the Mueller probe. And so what we're talking about in this regard would be what's going on in the inner workings of the White House and what General Kelly knows about what the president's intentions may have been. I don't know how much of Mueller's case is going to rely on conspiracy and how much of it is going to rely on obstruction of justice. My gut says there's going to be a nice, healthy mix of both. And so it sounds to me like Kelly would be providing information that is in regard to that, which would then be uh, in coordination with whatever White House counsel Don McGahn, now former White House counsel Don McGahn, provided, because we understand that McGahn testified before spe- or interviewed with the special counsel uh, considerably. So I I think you put together all of the information that Mueller has been able to gather from people inside the White House about the obstruction part. And I think that that's a whole separate piece of this puzzle that we haven't been paying as much attention to, I think mostly because it hasn't been as front and center as the conspiracy angle of this or collusion, as the president likes to call it. But it's not collusion legally. It would be conspiracy. So Ayers, Mike Pence's I think it was his chief of staff, was supposed yeah. to become Donald Trump's chief of staff and replace Kelly. He's demurred. He doesn't want to get the stink Of course he doesn't. Who wants to take that job at this point? I mean, Nick Ayers played this perfectly. He got his name out there as somebody that was wanted, and then he proceeded in the media to, to get himself to be the guy that said no. I mean, it's it's positioning himself perfectly to take some other job down the line. But nobody wants that chief of staff now. You can't corral this president. Nobody wants to be the guy that was what, third in line at this point or four? How many has he had? I guess this would be his third. Nobody wants to fail. And at this point, I think you've got to be part of this, I call them like liars, grifters, and thieves who surround the president and for whatever reason are willing to be a part of this strange cabal of humans. So it's odd to me that anybody would want to take that job. Alexander Haig was the chief of staff for Nixon during the final days. There is something heroic about stepping in I think that's why Kelly, who was a retired Marine general, just like Alexander Haig was a general, I think that's why he stepped in. He thought it was the patriotic duty to wind the presidency down. But it is kind of tough to wind this presidency down. I think I generally think that General Kelly went in there to wind this presidency down. Trump, he survives, doesn't he? Yeah, it's weird. I mean, he is bulletproof and and he's like Teflon. I mean, nothing sticks. The toupee on his head does, but. Well, there's that. And, and really, not in, not in a strong way. Um, <laughs> that's why he doesn't go out in the rain. Go ahead. Um, you know, there is some discussion of the fact that, like, Mattis and Kelly and those guys went in thinking that they could be the last line of defense. And I don't know what it is about Donald Trump that seems to lend an air of corruption to everyone who touches him. 
I don't know how much these people are able to do. I don't know that you're able to control him in any way. And I don't know what it is about getting close to him that seems to bring out the worst in people. And and I don't get it, to be honest with you, where the loyalty lies. I mean, he, it, it's entirely possible, and I don't say this conspiratorially, that his mafia connections are so deep that people are afraid of him. Because he, in and of himself, is not necessarily a charismatic human. He's not a likable human. I, I can see where there's a cult of personality around somebody who is likable, but there's nothing about this president that's endearing or likable. So I, I don't know where the, the fright factor comes into play, um, and I don't I don't ever want to be conspiratorial because the work I do, I try to keep as journalistic as possible. But it, it's starting to make less and less sense to me why anybody would risk their reputation to work with or for this man at this point. And so to me, it seems that they've got to have something over them in order to to play along. So what happens in the next two weeks? We have uh, Speaker Pelosi taking office January 3rd. Is Mueller banking on a democratically controlled House to push the investigation further? Is he holding off the big announcements until the Democrats are in charge? You know, I don't think so. I, people are asking sometimes, you know, why is it that it seems to be taking so long? And I, I went through one day, I think I found out it was like 27 or 28 different strains of this investigation just based on the information that we have that Mueller could possibly be following. And I'm talking about everything from the WikiLeaks connection to the meeting in the Seychelles to Jared Kushner's meetings with the Russian bank to the, to the Trump Tower meeting on June 9th. I mean, there are so many different angles to this that it would take it takes a long time. I mean, this is not going to be an easy an easy web to to figure out who's connected to who and how. And so it's going to it's going to take a while. And, and what I know about Robert Mueller from everything that I've read and everything that I've studied is he's as good as they get. And he's not going to bring forth anything that he hasn't crossed every T and dotted every I. And if you're going to go after the president of the United States for potential conspiracy with a foreign adversary, you better make sure that you've got all your ducks in a row. And so I think that just takes time. And, and they're still working on getting information from potential witnesses and and corroborators. And I think I, you know, my, my instinct is that Mueller's just doing what he needs to do in the time he needs to do it. I, you know, obviously we all want to see this come to a, a rapid conclusion, but I also don't want him to cut any corners. And so I think we just need to be patient. I think it'll be better come the new year when we have the House majority in, in Congress. And I say that because, or the Democratic majority in the House rather, and I say that because I think that we'll be able to get a lot of information we weren't able to get. Having subpoena power is very powerful. Well, let me tell my audience that anybody who appears on radio or TV to opine on Trump, Russia and collusion, anybody who's doing that is first checking the website investigaterussia.org. I promise you this. I didn't know CNN was reporting that General Kelly spoke with Mueller until I went to investigaterussia.org. I don't have time to watch CNN. <laughs> I, I, I go to you first. I do. I, I'm telling the God's honest truth. Well, thank you. Yeah, I mean, that's what we set out to do. If I can do a little bit of plug for the sure. site. Sure, um, yeah. So and donate. I'll say donate. Donate yeah, to the please. site. Well, well, I can explain that to you, is that we were funded with a with a generous private donation. And we did a little bit of, of larger dollar fundraising to keep it going. Uh, once we hit the midterms, we, we budgeted for the midterms. And then we realized that the Mueller investigation was going to continue. And we'd like to continue as well. Yeah. Um, and so what we're doing is going out to the people who read. We do a daily briefing that goes out every evening that summarizes the day's news. <laughs> Believe um, and, me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, and we have a really wonderful, loyal following. And I love that. And we just try to aggregate the day's news. And I know, you know, it's very hard because we are nonprofit and nonpartisan. And, and it's hard because I have a bit of a progressive background. And I know people who, who know me know that about me. Um, and it's very hard when you're compiling information about this to not lean a little bit against Trump because it does seem like the president is guilty of some sort mm -hmm. of cooperation with Russian entities. But I do try very hard not to use any of the sources I know that are too far to the left or too far to the yeah. right, even yeah. if I know them to be reputable, because I just don't want to push anyone in that direction. And I think that this is a huge matter of national security. I think anyone who's ever served in the military should be severely concerned about what this means for the, the democracy that they, they fought to protect. I don't think it's a Republican or Democratic issue. I really don't. I just think it's a matter of national security. And so that's the advisory board that we put together. That's the intention behind the site. That's what I try to do is aggregate the most important news 
so that you don't have to sit online all day. I do that for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, and, I, and I would encourage people, look, no, we're not asking everybody to contribute a ton of money. But, you know, I figured it out, like, mathematically, that everybody who gets the daily briefing threw in, like, 20 bucks. We'd be good to go for a while. It's a very small staff. And by that, I mean it's, like, me and my cats. <laughs> uh, no, it's not really. But I, <laughs> right. I, have, I have a researcher who's amazing. And then I do the bulk of the work. And, you know, we, we our expenses are not much more than just the resources we need to to get you good images and put together some videos and and to keep the 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 servers online and and you know the the hamsters running in the wheel but it's yeah. there's not nobody's making any money this is this is primarily a public service and an educational service and we want to keep going at least until Mueller comes out with something right so from that's day, why we're asking for money from day one since trump took office you've been up and running seven days a week up to the minute simplification of a complicated story about the trump family's relationship with russia and vladimir putin and you've done a great job Thank bre- you. breaking the scan you. you broke the scandal down to its constituent elements there are timelines that put the issues in context simple to navigate there are tabs that follow all the investigations the Mueller investigation the senate intelligence committee investigation the "Quote unquote House Intelligence Committee <laughs> investigation under Devin. Well, that'll Nunes. start up again, which uh-huh. is nice. And we'll, it's, we'll get when Adam Schiff takes that over. We'll we'll get some more uh, work on that front. So yeah. that'll be good. Um, the, and I, you know, I would add for people too. What I think is really fun that I do in my geekdom on this is that we have a really cool search function, mm-hmm. and you just type in a name or whatever it is, and it pulls up all the articles. And sometimes I'll be reading something, and the name will come up, and I'll think, Oh God, how do I know that name? And I'll run through the search function on the website, and it's like, oh, okay, that's how he's connected. So right. you know, even even when I'm going through all of this, there's so many different – and I would love – I mean, one of the things I'd love to do is, is buy a little time to even beef up our profile section because – You know, we've got all the main players, but there's some people who've now emerged that I would love to be able to create new profiles for because it gets just more complicated and deeper every day. But one of the things I think is is interesting is when you're reading a story and there's a name that come up and you think, oh, I've I've heard that. Where have I heard that? And I go through the search function and I think, okay, that's how that person's. And it, it works a lot with sort of the Russian nationals who contribute money or those who turned up at the inauguration mysteriously and some of the names that, that you don't hear every day, mm-hmm. um, but then how are somehow are connected to all of this because it is all intertwined. And this the is, names this is very complicated. The names aren't Smith. They're, no, they the are easiest name there's is Boutina. <laughs> Bout- yeah, went, there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of surveys. <laughs> yeah, I went Boutina. I can follow because I can pronounce it. What did you guys know back when you started uh, the committee to investigate Russia? Dot or my theory is you guys knew the entire story before it even got told. To, oh, I wish. No. I, I, well, I mean, the we steel do- well the steel <laughs> dossier, for example predates the Trump inauguration. What is the Steele dossier and how much did he get right? Oh, this is a great story that people really need to understand. And I would imagine your listeners probably have some clue of this. But Christopher Steele is the former British intelligence officer. And and how this all came down is that Glenn Simpson, who's a former Wall Street Journal reporter, started this firm, this consulting firm, a Fusion GPS, which is research, opposition research, but just, you know, in-depth research about companies and candidates and whatever it is. And, and they got hired originally by a Republican who was very anti-Trump to kind of figure out what they could about Trump, what kind of information, opposition research they could find on Trump. And as Simpson was going through this information, he was finding a lot of curious contacts between Trump and Russia. And he couldn't figure out why it was Trump kept going to Russia to get a deal and couldn't come back with one. But he had a lot of interest in in getting a deal in Russia. And then when this Republican operative realized that Trump was going to become the nominee, he decided he didn't want to put any money into this anymore. And so Simpson was curious and went out and kind of looked for money to see if anybody else was willing to continue to fund the effort. And that's when some of the Democrats got involved. I I guess it was Perkins Cole was the, uh, the law firm. That was willing to shell out some money uh, to continue this research, and Simpson for, for Hillary history. Clinton. They were Hillary. Clinton's yeah, they lawyers, were. Right. They were. Yeah, they worked with the Clinton campaign. But the idea was, let's see what we can find. And now Simpson, this is what I find fascinating: is Simpson has a history of doing work on Russians, Russian mafia, Russian money, like that. That was an area of interest for him when he was a reporter, and he knew Glenn Sim. I mean, excuse me. Yeah, he knew um, Steele. He knew Christopher Steele. Yes, Christopher Steele through that world, right? Through the, you know. 
when you're a reporter, I was a journalist for a long time. And when you're a reporter, you have sources. And so you just, you know, people who are on the beat. I mean, it's how I know all of the, the bloggers who've now gone on to become media moguls, because they were just bloggers when I was the internet correspondent for CNN, right? So for years and years, you build these contacts, and you know who these people are. And so he had this connection to Christopher Steele, who had been a reliable source, by the way, for US intelligence officials for years. He helped with the FISA scan, or the uh, FIC, what is it? Um, uh, soccer. What is it? The federal. Uh, uh, what is Fife? it? I think it's FIFA. FIFA. Thank you. FIFA. <laughs> yeah. FISA, I'm all FISA is the FISA warrants. FISA is the warrant. Yes. Yeah. You know, I've been reading the Comey. I've spent all day reading the Comey testimony. So I've got FISA war on the brain. <laughs> um, okay. But he, he helped break open the FIFA scandal. So he is he's a reliable source for U.S. intelligence. And so Simpson went to him and said, Find out what you can about Trump and Russia. And that's it. I mean, if you look at the testimony, like that's all Simpson asked him to do. He just said, see what you can find. And so Steele went out and worked his sources on the ground and found out all of these connections between the Trump campaign and the Russian government. And he wrote them up as memos. They were it was raw intelligence. And he would send the memos off. And the memos became the dossier. It's just raw intelligence that's been compiled together. And he was so concerned about what he was finding as a patriot that he handed it off to an FBI contact of his in Europe. And then eventually, weeks later, I think it made its way to the United States. So this was this was Steele being concerned about what he was coming across. And this is really important, is that Nothing in that dossier has been disproven. Some of it's been proven, and some of it hasn't been corroborated yet. But nothing's been proven to be false yet. That's, the PP tape, even the PP tape. We don't know. Has, yeah, right. we don't know. But that hasn't been discredited. We have no idea. Right. And so I think it's important when we hear over and get it, the phony dossier, the discredited, the dodgy dossier, like all of the adjectives that are used to describe it, are totally false. Because as far as we know, this is a collection of, of human intelligence, a collection of, of well-researched information that either is yet to be proven or has been proven true. You have a whole section on what Putin wants and what Trump yeah. wants. This is how I see the scandal after going to a committee to investigate Russia. Trump's in massive debt. Nobody in America will lend him money. New right. York City real estate, always been a money laundering operation. His part of it, yes. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's an easy way to launder money. So he lets Russia know he's open for business in terms of laundering money. He's going to build Trump Tower in Moscow. But more than that, he's going to let the Russian oligarchs in on the money laundering operation. Vladimir Putin is worth $200 billion. He wants to clean up some of his money. He wants the Magnitsky Act overturned so he can get his hands on money that's been frozen by the United States government. Uh -huh. Trump decides to run for president because he thinks it would be good for the brand. He never uh -huh. intended to become president. But Putin says, my God, we have a useful idiot. Let's see if we can actually put an idiot in the Oval Office. And, it's all very feasible. Yes. <laughs> and Trump is a patsy that Trump mm -hmm. never wanted to be president. He probably wanted to get out of debt, make some money and live a quiet life. He never wanted to be president. That's Oh, God, no. Who wants to do that kind of work? And what he's doing is, <laughs> is faking his way through it. He thinks it's a reality show, and he thinks mm -hmm. he can fake his way through it. And the problem is there's still 30, 35 percent of the electorate who's buying it. And, and that's the scary part. Right? So, what did, Trump, so what did Trump see what's want? going on? OK, so tell me what Trump wanted. Tell me what Trump wanted in 2016. And then what did he want the day after he found himself the president elect? What did he first want? And what does he, he want wanted to go back to the day before when he thought he was going <laughs> to lose? Um, yeah, I don't think he wanted. I think he wanted his ego wanted to win. Right. Because he's one of those guys that likes the win, but he doesn't want to do the work after the fact. So I don't think I think nobody thought they were going to win. And I think that the idea was let's elevate the name. Let's elevate the brand. Let's be the guy that ran for president. I mean, look, I interviewed Trump. I have to I have to say this. I interviewed him in 2000 very briefly at a book signing about his intention at that time to run for president. This is something mm -hmm. he's been kicking around for 18 years. Because at the time he was teasing the idea that he might run for president and he was doing it to sell books. Right. And I, I went and shoved a microphone in his face and asked him how he felt about the Internet. And he would ever do an, an interview on an Internet show. I was working for an Internet company at the time that was doing TV on the Internet. 
So I, I'm very familiar that he had this ambition back in the day in order to elevate his brand. He didn't have any intention of actually wanting to do the job. Um, mm-hmm. And that's abundantly clear because he spends a tremendous amount of time golfing and vacationing at Mar-a-Lago and hanging out with his friends or whoever he calls those people. So for him, it's always been about himself and money. I mean, he's a he's a narcissist through and through. He is interested in himself and he's interested in money. And that's it. And he thinks that being rich makes him a good person. I mean, he thinks that rich people are good people. And so it, it baffles me that the people who follow him with blind loyalty are the people that he would never associate or affiliate with. Right. I mean, he, he thinks those people are beneath him. And he disparages them. I'm, I'm sure I would bank money on it in private because we've heard all sorts of accounts of that kind of language and those kind of conversations taking place. But he's somebody who cares about himself and he cares about money. And so it makes sense that he's given the opportunity to elevate his brand, to become a worldwide name if he wasn't already, and to capitalize on that when he loses the presidential election. Then he wins and now he's indebted to Putin. And that's why he's so sycophantic. And, mm-hmm. and he likes being in that club. It's like it's like you see the bully and you decide you want to be the bully. Right. right. He likes those guys. He likes the strong men. He likes the dictators. He likes the authoritarians. He wants to be seen like that. He thinks that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. So that's why he sympathizes with them and he takes their side. And that's why he's I mean, I think he wants to he secretly wants to be Putin. He wants people to, to respect him out of fear the way that Putin has garnered respect out of the oligarchs that surround him, except Trump doesn't have the intelligence or the experience or the you know manipulative personality to be able to pull that off. And so said he's just surrounded by people who either want to mitigate the damage or want to kiss up to him in a in a very strange way. Um, yeah. So it's not that. I mean, that's what he wants. He just he wanted to be more famous and he wanted to be more rich. Right. I've always found that Reagan, George W. Bush and Trump were useful idiots for corrupt elements of the Republican Party. Trump transcended this and became a a useful idiot for both the Republican Party and the Kremlin. And and, I can't figure out the Republican Party part because it it seems to me like if you feel like he's hijacked your brand, you could step in at some point. I mean, I'm no Pence fan, and I think he's he's guilty of a lot of this stuff, too. But I think he knows more than than we suspect he knows. But I don't understand why it is you'd allow your party to be hijacked in this way. If Putin has compromising information on Trump, which we learned from the Steele dossier, why would he stop with Trump? Why wouldn't he have compromising information about Mike Pence and Paul Ryan and Mitch McConnell? Well, that's that's what makes it all very suspicious. There are people that I think are high on that list. I think it's very strange the way that Lindsey Graham turned. I think it's very interesting the way that Rand Paul is speaking out in favor of Russia right now. Devin Nunes is inexplicable. I don't understand why. I mean, we know Rohrbacher has been mm-hmm. very pro-Russia for a very long time, but Nunes's behavior is inexplicable. I mean, there are people who you have to imagine there is compromising information, whether it is they were cut in on some sort of deal, whether there's personal compromising information. Uh, you have to remember, I mean, it, once KGB, always KGB. I mean, that's how, how Putin was raised. And that's mm-hmm. that's one of the things I love about the, the website is that, and I, I call them my term papers, that I we wrote all of these sort of informative pieces that are on the site about the history of Putin and what he wants and the relations between the U.S. and Russia, because that context is important. I mean, Putin hates Clinton. He's he's hated Clinton. He he despises the Clintons in general. He hates the United States. He doesn't like what the breakup of the Soviet Union represented. He wants to bring Russia back into superpower status. I mean, these are deep seated urges and desires that Putin has had for a very long time. So don't underestimate the personal desire of Putin to destroy Hillary Clinton and then take on the United States and undermine democracy. I mean, he is he's getting everything that he wants and he's basically just laying it out there. And I mean, if you're going to destroy a country from the inside out, Trump's doing a spectacular job. Yes. We've been talking so, with Jackie Schechner. She is the editor in chief of the committee to investigate Russia. It's the holiday season and you should go there and donate money and read her work every day over at the committee to investigate Russia. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, I will say that I'm never comfortable asking for money. I, it's a well, very uncomfortable it. thing for me to do. I'll do it um, for But you. I would ask people if they hear this and they and they go to the site. It's um, 
the, so the URL is at investigaterussia.org, um, but it is called the Committee to Investigate Russia, which is Russia, which is sort of a strange misnomer. But um, that was the one decision I was not allowed to make. <laughs> Everything else I made, it was named before I got there. Well, but, um, you should go there. Maybe you want to save the republic, or maybe you're somebody like me and you just want to sound smart at a dinner party without having to read too much in advance. You get to go <laughs> to the committee. Yeah, to- I do try to. I try to break it down and make it easy. And I, I, I really, I spend a tremendous amount of time watching and and researching and and following the news so that you don't have to. So at the end of the day, you get this this tidy little briefing delivered to your inbox. And we don't. By the way, I don't spam you. I have no interest in selling your right. email address to anybody. I'm just doing the work for you. I'm I telling you, it. this is the emperor has no clothes. Jackie. Oh, Shackley, very much so. Uh, for me, naked as can be. No, yeah. no I'm <laughs> saying, but for me, it's like if you want to know where most pundits or bloviators get their talking points from and their information is from Jackie Schechner oh, over at the committee. Sweet. Thank it's you. true. What do you oh, think? I, I, thought, I thought you meant the emperor had no clothes in terms of, of Trump. I was like, oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> no, you get your people get their talking. <laughs> po- they go to your. Yeah, I've heard a rumor that uh, we've got some some journalists and some pundits who check us out. So oh, of course. Of I course. appreciate that. That's, it's the that's only place. It, seriously, it's the only place to go in this day and age where there's this tsunami of information coming over the transom. You need somebody to curate and simplify and organize this Russia scandal, and you're doing it. You are doing it, and I can't thank, thank you, you enough for the work you do over at the Committee to Investigate Russia.org. Let's end on this. A year and a half ago, I said on this show that Ivana Trump, the first wife, was a KGB agent sent to America oh, through Canada to marry Donald Trump and create a Russian asset, and she couldn't take him anymore. Who could? So Melania... <laughs> Melania, also from a a former Iron Curtain nation, she was sent over to marry Trump and use him as a Russian asset. Now, I said this as a joke a year and a half ago. You know, Ron Suskind, he was a Wall Street Journal Uh reporter and he writes great books. Uh, He's a friend of mine. And he said to me about three months ago, talking through the side of his mouth, he said, you know, the word is that (laughs) Ivana and Melania maybe former KGB agents who have been sent over to create a Russian oh, asset. How crazy. I mean, where, what are we talking about here? Is that you know, possible? Nothing is impossible. You know, Evelyn Farkas, who is a, you know, Russian expert. She's on your um, board, right? She's on our board. She's amazing. And and she actually said both on television and then in a, a video series that we did, an original series that we put together, that it's entirely possible that Paul Manafort is a, is a Russian agent and that he's been, he had been turned and, and he was sent to, to run the campaign. And and I don't I, I think that's entirely possible. I mean I think when this is all said and done, we're gonna find out. I think it's gonna blow people's minds. I think those people who haven't been paying attention all along um, and are just sort of coming to it now are gonna have to to get caught up. Um, but I think a, a lot is going to be fascinating and shocking. I think this runs deeper and wider than than anyone's going to possibly imagine. Jackie Schechner is editor-in-chief of the Committee to Investigate Russia. I want to thank you for making this fun and not terrifying. Oh, God, no. It's totally my pleasure, and, and I'm happy to do it anytime. Stand the line for one second. Sure. The correct web address for the Committee to Investigate Russia is investigaterussia.org. For more of my conversation with Jackie Schechner, I invite you to visit me over at davidfeldmanshow.com. And while you're over there, please sign up for my weekly newsletter. From the KPFK studios in Southern California, I'm David Feldman, Medicare for All.